Okay, uh, so welcome. We're going to show you um, a uh, esophagus uh, here, which has been um, treated with POEM, so per oral endoscopic myotomy. And I'll have a, just a chat to you about some of the features that you can expect to find after, but also some of the features you can use to, when your patient after such a procedure or even before such a procedure says to you, oh, I've still got problems, what you might be looking for. So here up at the, uh, you can tell where the entrance to this tunnel was for POEM by looking at the clips, uh, where the clips were. So you get this bunched up kind of almost uh, esophageal clip artifact up in the uh, esophagus. You can also tell the orientation of the tunnel and where it was because if we go back in here, uh, we have a look, <coughs> we turn the scope so the greater curve is at 9, the lesser curve is at 3 and we come back. We should find those clips at either 1 o'clock or 5 and we perfectly find them at 1 o'clock so that this was a anterior POEM procedure. The tunnel therefore usually would run down here at the 1 o'clock um, down to the junction. First stop, the junction, pause it and make a decision about whether you see inflammation there. Do you see evidence of um, erosive uh, reflux esophagitis or erosive esophagitis second three to acid reflux. We don't see that here. You can be more precise by looking around the junction, use the cap to splay the junction open, uh, really focus on trying to make sure that you see everything underneath all these folds because otherwise you can miss subtle esophagitis and you can use this to have discussions with your patients but not if you didn't look. And then we can even use the magnification feature of this not even the most high resolution of Fujifilm endoscopes, e.g. 760Z, uh, to beautifully delineate this. And if you have any question about the pattern, then you can switch to BLI to have better visualization of that. So, for example, here, maybe you want to look more closely at that. Uh, then we can do this, uh, and then we can get the full uh, vascular uh, pattern and therefore the architecture of this zone. So having looked at that, I don't see any evidence of uh, endoscopically visible at least, reflux esophagitis. You do see here some stasis of um, saliva. This is very common uh, in patients with achalasia, even when they're treated because of the aperistaltic component. Now further, we can also see that this junction looks open. We don't attach too much uh, to that, but maybe we can go into the stomach and then we can J the scope or retroflex the scope to come look up at the junction. Now this um, endoscope very nicely retroflexes and we can see now if we take a freezed view underneath the um, gastroesophageal junction that it is very open. We have exposed squamous mucosa to the stomach so of course the patient may well be experiencing some gastroesophageal reflux symptoms even though they don't have evidence of erosive uh, gastritis. So this view almost certainly the ability to retroflex this endoscope into the esophagus suggests that the um, uh, procedure to treat the LES is complete. I mean, we certainly would not be going back to treat that LES uh, ever again. So that's important information for your patient um, after their POEM procedure. Um, and as we therefore continue to look at the stomach, we um, would also look for, of course, any other reason why uh, there might be lack of uh, proton pump inhibitor use because, of course, those patients, especially ones with junctions open like that, uh, they, they, they tend to need a dose of uh, proton pump inhibitor lifelong. And so you can, of course, get some surrogate information that the patient is not uh, taking that or, or whether they're taking it or not uh, by looking at the duodenum um, and, of course, all the other things that we do when looking at um, uh, in gastroscopy are very important. So there you go, that's how to uh, look at the gastroesophageal junction, um, that's how to investigate the esophagus after um, an achalasia um, intervention. The final thing that I would say is that when you're withdrawing from the esophagus, you probably should think about using BLI or virtual chrome endoscopy or MBI or uh, eye scan, depending on your endoscope manufacturer. In this case, BLI uh, from Fujifilm, pause it at the gastroesophageal junction, and then what we're trying to detect is squamous dysplasia or squamous cancer because Stasis, chronic inflammation, these are the precursor lesions for um, esophageal cancer. And uh, they're for uh, squamous esophageal cancer. And therefore, um, you should probably be looking in virtual chrome endoscopy because these are very, very hard to see in white light. Another option is LCI, which I'll show you in a minute, or linked color imaging. Um, 
but LCI, uh, sorry, virtual chrome endoscopy um, BLI is, is excellent and just go slowly. I mean, this you might say, well, yeah, David, this patient's under complete anesthesia. You've got all the time in the world. Sure, that's true. Uh, and of course, it is, it is more difficult in patients who have, um, who have uh, sedation or nothing at all, in fact. So we see an inlet patch, not much else. And then we can do it once more with LCI to make the point that this is also a detection mode. So really this is the point of this mode is for things that are hypervascular to stand out more. So you see the hypervascular nature of that part of the gastrofield junction. We already looked at the pattern. Uh, we see the clip artifacts standing out beautifully in LCI here. Uh, this, which is a squamous papilloma of the esophagus of no real clinical value or relevance. Um, but nothing else uh, standing out here. Make sure we get the angles as you come out. This, I've missed this angle twice. There's a little bit of food sitting in there. And uh, in the patch I just pushed past, so we can go back and look at it. But it is, of course, you have to go real slow. And this ridge, which is maybe often formed by the vertical column. There we go, there's the inlet patch. Okay, hope that was interesting. Thanks for watching.